Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. And it does continue to be a crazy time out there in the stock markets. So for today's video, I actually thought we'll move away from talking about individual stocks. And we're going to talk about uh, the market in general, as well as strategies for investors during volatile times like these. So let's jump into it. So the global stock markets are in a, an official bear market. They're down about 20 to 30 percent as coronavirus spreads. The global pandemic was declared uh, today or yesterday by the uh, WHO. And oil price also plummets uh, with Saudi Arabia and Russia having disagreements on supply controls. So that couldn't have come at a worse, a worse time as well. And then we've also got the upcoming U.S. election, which adds more potential uncertainty. So the agenda for today's video, we're going to review the recent stock market performance as painful as that might be. Then we're going to talk about portfolio strategy in times like these. And of course, this is where you'd like to be an ostrich and just bury your head in the sand, but, but that is not a good approach. Um, and thirdly, we'll talk about where do markets go from here. And of course, of course, far be it from me to suggest that I know, but we are going to look at three specific scenarios. We're going to look out a little bit longer term and see what the bull base and bear case scenarios might look look like for the market in general. And then lastly, we'll conclude with a few thoughts, uh, including what I've been doing. Let's jump into it. So here we go. Uh, we're going to talk about the Canadian index first, and then we'll look at the S&P 500 as well. So here's the S&P TSX Composite Index just over the last year, and it is painful. Um, I call this the... Uh, waterfall pattern here when we look at our technical analysis and it's really uh, since late February just dropped off of a cliff. Uh, Canadian index is down 30 percent in less than a month. It's at five-year lows which is crazy. Uh, if you pull up the long-term chart for the S&P TSX Composite Index it is it's just been a really rough 10 years. Uh, right now the index itself offers over a four percent dividend yield uh, so that's something to think about. And I think the Canadian index, given obviously our exposure to the broader global economy, plus the oil hit, it's it's likely one of the hardest hit indices in the world. Um, so that's enough for Canada. And let's jump into, oh, sorry, I had these little bubbles prepared. So punch one was uh, the coronavirus and Continuing the boxing analogy, punch two came with the $30 oil post uh, the Saudi-Russia uh, increasing supply. And punch three I put down below as TBD. You know, we can't predict uh, how, how low this might go in the short term. Uh, so let's move on to the U.S. markets. So the S&P 500, uh, you can see over the last year, also not a pretty picture the S&P 500 is down 27% in less than a month. Um, and that takes it back to about the December 2018 levels. If you remember, the stock market had really uh, dropped off then. Uh, not quite as, as bad as the Canadian index over the longer term, though. So the, the U.S. market had been a lot stronger coming into this. So I'm going to call this the dagger uh, formation for our technical analysis. The difference between a dagger and a waterfall I don't really know. Both both are bad. Uh, both are not good. Both don't feel good. Uh, let's uh, let's just move on. So, from a portfolio perspective, um, what can you be thinking about as an investor? Well, the first thing and the obvious thing is don't panic, and uh, definitely don't bury your head in the sand. I think when it comes to not panicking times like this, having some investments that provide solid and safe dividends. Some solid and safe dividend income helps. Um, it helps you ignore the, at least for me anyway, it helps me ignore the short-term price drops. And I know if I'm if I own a stock that pays a dividend and I don't believe that it's at risk, I can sit tight and say I'm still getting paid. Um, and over time the, the stock price is going to correct. Number two, uh, recognize your true risk tolerance. I think all, as, all of us as investors, when we think about our investment strategy, uh, it, it's sometimes easy to think you might have a higher risk tolerance than you actually do. Now is the time when you're going to find out truly what your risk tolerance is as an investor. And I would suggest write it down. 
Um, and for me, I remember this feeling back in 2008, which was my first big uh, market crash that I, that I uh, not lived through, but lived through professionally. And it really told me a lot about my true uh, risk tolerance. So this is now's the time, while it's definitely not fun to go through it, uh, think about what your real risk tolerance is and, and write it down. Number three, know what you own. Um, and it, it's never more important than in a time like this. So if you see the equity portfolio below, that's just a quick snapshot of my equity holdings by type. And uh, don't really talk a lot about my holdings on the channel or my portfolio construction in general, but I thought for this video it would be important to give you a little context. About half of my equity holdings are in index funds or ETFs, and the other half, or in my case now it's about 44%, are in individual positions. So for me, those are high conviction positions that I think will uh, be attractive investments relative to the market. Right now I hold 10. Uh, so I don't hold many. Uh, my plan is to hold anywhere between 5 and 15 and get the diversification from my index and ETF holdings of the broader market. And then those 10 names, I, I want to know them really well. And I've got a thesis that I think will make them uh, better performing than the markets uh, overall. And of course, uh, sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong, but that's, uh, that's my approach for it. And when you know what you own, um, I think the next thing that you want to do is review the liquidity or insolvency risk for your stocks. So for individual names, you know, the first question that I, I want to know is, are, are the individual stocks that I own, are they going to be able to weather this? Number one, are they profitable? And number two, what does the balance sheet look like? And if, if uh, of course, you're not going to like the, the quote on the individual stocks that you own. Some are, are going to hold up better than others. But if you feel and believe that uh, the businesses are profitable, the balance sheet's in decent shape, and they're going to be able to weather this storm, uh, that you know that they're going to make it through the other side. You want to get really concerned if you own uh, stocks or individual investments where the there's real balance sheet risk. And then other things that you can consider potential opportunity to rebalance. So depending on your overall asset allocation, do you have some fixed income or other, um, other uh, assets, maybe some cash? And I think that's the next one here. Um, you can decide if you want to start to de either deploy that cash, and I would, you know, probably do that in stages for me. Um, and fixed income might be an opportunity to sell or a little bit of your fixed income and put that into the equity markets. So considerations, and now if we jump to the broader markets and considerations for the bull, base, and bear case scenarios, uh, I'm going to do, it's a pretty high level scenario analysis and I'm going to focus on three major issues and a longer term lens. It's impossible for me to predict the short term in the next, in the next month or two. So the three major issues I'm going to talk about are the coronavirus, how bad will it get, how long will it take to recover, oil, will Russia and Saudi keep supply up for, for the medium term or is this just a short term scare, impact to shale and higher cost producers, bankruptcies. Um, and what does the medium term oil forecast look like? Are we going to stay down here at the $30 level? Are we going to get back sort of that $45 level or in a bull side, could we get to 60? And on a day like today, that feels uh, overly ambitious, but just wanted to look at a few of those scenarios. And then the U.S. election, we won't talk much about it. And uh, there's no question this channel isn't meant to be political, but the U.S. election is undoubtedly adding some uh, uncertainty into the markets. I think it's important to note that Biden has begun to build a lead over Sanders and I think uh, over the last week or two there uh, be before that started to, to happen I think there was some concern um, uh, that Sanders might be uh, the Democratic nom nominee and again putting your political views aside um, the markets were not viewing that positively and then the potential economic fallout could lead to uh, uncertainty for Trump. So the last point here, scenario analysis is not going to consider a doomsday scenario. Of course, uh, that you, you could argue is a possibility, um, but I don't think there's really any point in, in looking at a doomsday scenario. It's not really going to help us make a decision. 
So here we go, illustrative scenarios for the market in general. And you're going to notice that I'm not, I'm not putting a price or a potential market levels here. Um, absolutely no way that I can do that with any, any degree of confidence. But I think just outlining what a bull case might look like, a base case and a bear case, will give us some idea to sort of where we feel the potential outcomes are and whether it might be an attractive time to start putting some money to work in the market. So the bull case, uh, the coronavirus is mostly contained over the next three to six months, so it's more of a short-term scare. Uh, potential recession in the short term, but quickly turned around. Pent up demand returns, if you think about uh, tourism, travel, etc. Um, and a large stimulus package. Uh, demand for oil picks up and medium term pricing expectations move up towards $60. Again, I'm probably being a little bit ambitious here, um, but again, this is the bull case. And US election uncertainty dissipates. And so I think for sure, if, uh, if you believe in the, the bull case, now's a great time to be buying stocks given how sharply they've fallen. Uh, let's move on to the base case. So base case is more, the coronavirus is contained but over the next nine to 12 months. So it takes a little bit longer to move past. Uh, definitely enter into a, a recession, but there's large stimulus packages globally. Um, oil prices recover to $45 in the medium term. Again, we're not talking short term, we're talking medium term here. And the base case really is, you know, this could take a few years to fully recover, but markets are forward looking and once we get past the worth, worst of this, uh, the markets will start looking to the future. And then the bear case, uh, coronavirus cannot be contained in the short term, uh, resulting in longer term impact. And, it, and I think we can imagine that a, a, a health pandemic like Corona, if it, if it cannot be contained in the short term, it's going to result both in, in panic, um, in the stock market, but also outside of the stock market. Um, this is very different from previous financial stock market market crashes. This is this is people's health um, and lives that we're talking about. So number two, uh, and this is really the point I was getting at. In, in this case, increased liquidity or government policy can't really help a health pandemic. Uh, recession is inevitable, and it could be multi-year. And, you know, if you're thinking about a worst case scenario, oil demand remains weak and production high. So get used to $30 pricing. Obviously, the, the impacts of that for the Canadian oil patch, but also the shale producers would be catastrophic. Um, I don't think they, that many producers would be able to survive at that level. And potentially here, um, more additional U.S. election uncertainty. And I've put here as a final bullet bankruptcies. You know, I think um, in certain sectors um, and companies that don't have a strong balance sheet, it, this, bear, this bear case scenario could lead to several um, bankruptcies, insolvencies, or, or workouts. Uh, so those are sort of the three key scenarios. And again, while not putting any specific levels on each one, to me anyway, it's helpful to think through where do we go from here? thinking out a little bit into the medium to the longer term. So thinking out over the next 12 months plus as opposed to the next week or two. And to me, I get comfort in the bull and the base case scenarios that um, putting some money to work here uh, is not a bad idea. Uh, the bear case scenario, I think, would take us uh, uh, meaningfully farther down. Um, but again, it's really tough to predict that. So with that, we'll jump to our conclusion slide. So number one, seeing this much red on your screen is never fun. Uh, in, in, in my own opinion, having a written investment strategy really helps you take the emotions out in times like these. Definitely doesn't make it easy though. Uh, conviction on your individual stocks is key, at least in, in my opinion. For me, it's easier for me to see my ETFs and the broader index go down uh, when my individual stocks are going down, I get a little bit more heartburn, so I need to have higher conviction for those. Again, the dividends help in making sure that there's no insolvency or balance sheet risk. Tough, if not impossible, to predict timing the bottoms in the market, 
particularly during panic selling. You know, no one's putting together a discounted cash flow model and doing rational analysis when they're trading in the market these days. Um, there's a lot of panic and emotional buying and selling out there, mostly selling. Uh, so what have I been doing? I've added to my equity positions in the last month. I've deployed some cash plus some fortuitous timing on the sale of my shares in Enbridge and I do have a video coming up on that. I actually made the video um, uh, probably six days ago now, but I wanted to get this one out first. Um, I, I got lucky on the timing of my Enbridge sale. I sold the shares at $55 uh, Canadian. And plus I rebalanced some of my fixed income. I don't, I don't have a huge allocation to fixed income, but I thought this was a good time to, to pare it back even further and put some money to work um, on the equity side. So if we think about it in terms of units instead of uh, dollars, uh, I've already put 25 units to work after that first punch to the gut uh, in the markets that we talked about. I just put another 25 units to work after the second punch to the gut. Uh, which is just happening this week. And I'm prepared with another 50 units uh, if this gets much worse. Um, so I'm not, not I don't wanna give you the false pretense that I have a ton of cash sitting on the, on the sidelines. That's not necessarily the case, but I did have some uh, combined with some fixed income allocation that I could move. And again, that sale of, of the Enbridge shares that's given me some, some liquidity to, to put, put to work here. And so I've phased it in. Mostly bought index positions for now. Um, I have been researching a lot of individual names, but my view is that I'll continue to research those names and I can always move some capital from those index positions to the individual names uh, if I get really high conviction um, on those. So even if, if the markets continue to decline from here, it's most likely the names that I would have high con conviction on would also decline at least as much. Again, um, for me, it's easier to, put some money into the index when I think everything's cheap, um, but I want, I want to make sure that I'm not buying an individual name without doing the proper research and analysis. And when it does come to individual names, I think now's a great time to focus on the highest quality names, strong balance sheets, the companies that you always would love to own, um, but never, never come into your price range. I think now's the time to uh, look, at, look at those names, do your homework and see if there's one or two that you want to add to your portfolio. So that, that's it for today's video. Really curious uh, to hear what your strategy and plan is. Obviously it's a, it's a crazy time um, for all of us and it's never any fun seeing this much red on the screen. Um, but uh, I think it, it's helpful to talk about it and it's obviously helpful to have a plan. That's it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, we'll be back soon with more content. But until then, happy investing and definitely don't bury your head in the sand.